So this is a top core made by TopCon. Have you heard of the top? Have you been to the top? Would you like to go to the top? Of course. If you got the size, you got the quads, then you'd like it on top down. Well, this is the top of the line vintage lens here. Um, of course, it's a better one. It's 1.4 uh, aperture, but still not bad for Tokyo Kogaku. So stay tuned and we'll learn about the three lenses I have, a 35, a 58, and a 135. So, why don't you join me on a little journey down? Journey Japanese, I think I'm journey Japanese, I really think so. Japanese Imperial Army. Lenses. Alright, see you in a sec. Here I am, V.A.M. Green is always. This is Camera Talk with Dr. Scott. Okay, this week we're going to be looking at uh, three particular lenses from a family of my favorite, 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 optic company. And that's unfortunate they didn't, uh, they didn't last as long as, it matters. as uh, you know, Canon and Nikon and, and Pentax and Fuji and all the Olympics, Olympics and everything else, Olympus. Um, even though Olympus is now gone by the wayside, so these guys shouldn't feel so all alone. But anyway, um, I don't know whether you have heard of or not uh, a company called uh, Topcon or Topcore. Um, but I've got three of their lenses and uh, there's not a lot of people on YouTube doing videos about these besides the Japanese. Japanese absolutely love these lenses and we already know what the Japanese feel about cameras and, and everything else. You know, they're, uh, they want the best of the best of the best. Be the best. You know, when the best have the best, they can't, they can't be wrong. So what I want to do is introduce you to the three lenses that I have here uh, with me today. Um, my, my first one here is the um, RE, and, and that's one of the differentiation between these lenses and the other top core lenses. You have UV top core and uh, auto top core and high top core and whatnot. But the RE auto top core were considered their uh, cream of the crop. Rich, smooth, buttery. Um, their absolute best. And uh, so those are the ones that are most highly sought after. And if you get a chance to get one, do it, you'll be happy. But the first one anyway that I have here is the 35 millimeter 2.8. And um, you know, I'm gonna go through each one of these one by one, but I just wanna introduce, introduce them uh, to you as such. So again, this was the 35 2.8. Uh, the next one is uh, again, one of the more popular ones. This is the 58 millimeter uh, 1.8. Now it's, uh, it's big brother the 58 1.4 one everybody wants but it's also like four or five hundred dollars or even more depending on the condition that it's in oh my god um so that's a little a little pricey for modesty photography because you know again we're here to save you money and whatnot versus uh you know again this 58 uh 1.8 which is still a pretty damn good lens um so i'm gonna go through uh go through introduction of this one as well. And then on the longer end here, I have the, um, uh, our, again, RE Auto Top Core, uh, 135, 3.5. And uh, again, a super, super lens. This one's actually kind of funky. Funky coma data. Comes with a, a telescoping uh, uh, hood uh, built right into it. So it's a... Uh, Playing with yourself. You know, <laughs> it's uh, fun to play with, but also, uh, you know, is, is very, uh, uh, very well equipped for uh, outdoor, outdoor shooting where uh, you want to try and avoid the, the lens flares and whatnot. But first, let me uh, talk a little bit about, um, about the company itself. You know, uh, again, the... Uh, and as you can read on the, uh, not only on the, on the cap, but on the inside here, it says uh, Tokyo Kogaku. 
Uh, so Tokyo Kogaku, and if you, uh, you remember my other uh, video on the Nikon, which was Nippon Kogaku, um, you know, they were kind of competitors back in the day, you know, uh, Nikon and, uh, and Top Core. Um, <clears throat> you know, Tokyo Kogaku started in 1932, uh, you know, right, right as, uh, you know, Japan was kind of building up its, its uh, military. Uh, getting ready for getting ready for its uh, campaign to go out there and take over the world, uh, which was kind of what was going on in uh, Nazi Germany at the time too. So uh, Tokyo Kogaku translates to Tokyo Optical uh, Company. Now it was uh, a supplier to the Imperial Japanese Army. Now, Kogaku, uh, Nippon Kogaku, which is Nikon, was the uh, supplier to the Imperial Japanese Navy. And so, um, you know, they, I guess were competitors at the time, but they were both supplying different branches of the military. So, you know, not so much. But anyway, um, so uh, in uh, uh, 1953, the name um, uh, Topcon uh, took, took the place of, uh, of uh, Tokyo Kogaku, even though they still, they still used it, the name. But Topcon uh, became became the uh, the actual corporate name of the company, and um, and their lenses right after that. So 1953 was uh, Topcon, 1954 was Topcore. Uh, so Topcon, kind of like Nikon. Topcore, kind of like Nikor. Mm, I don't know if there's any kind of copying going on, but it's mighty coincidental. Suspicious Percy. That uh, that you know, Topcon, Topcore, was uh, naming their their brands uh, very similar to to that. Um, so in 1963, you know, just skipping ahead through uh, through its history, um, one of the claims to fame where they were the first uh, 35 millimeter SLR cameras to produce a through the lens um, exposure meter. Uh, and then everyone else copied after that, you know, Pentax the very next year and then Nikon uh, the year after that um, with their with their models. Um, so anyway, so Topcore was a, was a trendsetter at the time, but also just the quality of their uh, the quality of their of their lenses. Um, you know, again, for if you want to compare to Takamars and and things like that. Uh, no, no, no. You know, again, the Takamar people are out there are like, no. All right, let me get the fuck out of here. But, you know, there, uh, there are this fantastic, um, fantastic uh, um, build quality and, and whatnot on these. So, you know, that's one of the, one of the things that, that was, their, was their claim to fame was the, the quality of, of the, uh, the manufacturing itself. Now, one of the downsides, of course, that kind of killed off the company, one of the things that killed off the company anyway, is their mount that they chose, um, Exacta. Uh, you know, it's very narrow, uh, very narrow opening. That's what you said. Um, you know, versus the other camera companies or optics companies who went with M42s or other bayonet mounts. So top core, top con kind of, shot themselves in the foot by shooting yourself in the foot and you chose the bullet by sticking with uh, with that lens mount and um it was a shame because the the quality of these lenses kind of blows away um the competition but because of that you know lack of foresight 
um, to see w what was wrong with their, with their design. Uh, the company pretty much uh, called it quits in uh, 1980. And, um, you know, they went on to, some, to produce some other, um, you know, continuation production of their cameras, but all their 35 millimeter stuff was, was done. You know, their SLRs were, were out of the game in 19, 1980. Um, now also another little, you know, uh, fact about them too is when they were exported to the U.S., um, they were named uh, Bestseller, was the name of the Bestseller Top Con. And to the uh, U.K. and the Commonwealth countries as a Hanimex. So if you see those names out there, you know that they're actually top con, top core, and they're good quality stuff. So, um, but again, the best of the best is. Is the RE Auto is uh, is their their best class out there. Uh, right now, I'm going to get into uh, what I usually do with. Uh, um, with my with my introductions because remember this is this is like all my videos this is not a technical review you know i don't get into taking pictures of brick walls and looking at vignetting and you know like checking out the the, the image quality in the corners and pixel peeping and all that other kind of stuff i'm just introducing you to a, a cool bunch of vintage lenses that you can use on your mirrorless camera with something like this an exacta and since I, you know, uh, shoot mostly with my uh, Sony uh, A7R2, um, my Xacta to NEX mount lets me use uh, any of these um, lenses. And of course, you know, this is not expensive at all, you know, to uh, to be able to to bring something on board my uh, my camera like that. So um, I'm gonna do that right now. So let's let's uh, start with the 35 millimeter, and I'm going to take a picture of my Canon M50, which is filming this uh, video now, and then I'm going to show you some uh, recent pictures I just took of my modeling son, Dylan McDonald, in his uh, in his uh, glory, so to speak. Usually, I take these pictures at like 6:30 in the morning because that's when he's at his happiest. So uh, anyway, so let me do that and uh, let's rock and roll. Okay, so starting off with my 35. Let me grab my Sony here and uh, take off my, uh, what is this anyway? It's a Nikon, uh, ooh, it's my 105 2.5 super, super lens. I'm gonna, this is actually part of my uh, Nikon family uh, video that I did, but can't wait to do his own video. Uh, it's one of the best lenses ever. For uh, portrait, and that's what I'm mostly into, is uh, portrait lenses. But anyway, another story. So um, let me start off with my 35, and I'll hook this hook this bad boy up to the uh, to my Sony a7R2 now a little bit about the uh, the 35 millimeter um, let me make sure I shoot this at 2.8 I would shoot everything wide open just to show you uh, what it looks like from from wide open since that's what uh, everybody loves with their fast lenses and, and whatnot is to uh, to see what it does wide open anyway all of these lenses are, were introduced all at the same time with the RE Auto um, Tokyo Kogaku. And it is, um, <clears throat> so it's a 35 millimeter, 1963, when all these, all these three were, uh, were born, a few years before, I, for, before me. And um, it is seven, this particular one is seven elements in five groups. All three of them are uh, single layer coated, uh, single layer coating. Uh, six aperture blades. Again, all three uh, share the same same design. The closest focus distance is uh, 23 uh, centimeters uh, for those who are metrically challenged. 
you can look that look that up yourself. Maybe I'll po poke it up here for you so you can don't have to look it up. And it's uh, 230 grams, so it's uh, you know it's not heavy heavy, but it's heavy enough. So anyway, let me give you a picture of my uh, my Canon M50, and as usual, I focus in on the uh, the end of the uh, the end of the lens, which is filming this at moment. It's a EOS M15 to 45 um, millimeter lens. So let me use my focus peaking and magnifier to get in there as tight and sharp as possible. Even for a 35, this baby sharp. One, two, three. And take a look at that. So that is my that is my 35 millimeter. Now, of course, I'm going to uh, include some pictures of Dylan right now. All right. So let me take that off. Switch it over to my 50. Put the cap back on here. All right, so this is, again, this is the 50 milli 58 millimeter, sorry. That's, it's not a 50, it's 50-ish. Um, so again, it's, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great lens, um, even at, at 1.8, so wide open. Um, at 1.8, it's beautiful, beautiful piece of glass. I feel pretty, oh so pretty. Uh, as I said, the 1.4 is sweet. Um, you know, maybe sometime a little later, uh, maybe next month. Don't tell anybody, next month. Um, I may uh, get a 58 1.4, just because they're, they're very nice. You know, I played with one for a while and uh, Gives me that uh, gear acquisition syndrome. Um, so anyway, let me show you what the what the 1.8 looks like, which is still plenty fast, still plenty cool, um, and super uh, super sharp. I mean, this is uh, something that uh, you know makes other makes other lenses drool. All right, one, two, three. All right, so that's the, uh, that's the 58 1.8. And uh, again, the details about it, again, 1963. Um, it uh, is six elements, um, single layer coating again six aperture blades and the closest focus distance to it is uh, 45 centimeters and again up here i'll put that in uh put that in feet or inches so you can get what that is and it's uh 220 grams so it's actually lighter than uh, lighter than 35. so that's my uh my 58 1.8 uh again it's an excellent excellent lens and very economical which is again what modesty photography is here for, uh, introducing you to uh, economic things. So, here's some pictures of Dylan. Check him out now. All right. So that's the fifty-eight. Let me take it off. Take it off the adapter. Actually, I should get another table. <laughs> this metal table is a little noisy, isn't it? With the metal clinking on and off of it. So, anyway, this is the. Hang on, let me find my my dots here to match them up. This is the uh, again 135. It's an f 3.5, and as I said, it was made in 1963. All of these uh, made the same year. That's uh, when they when they came out with this uh, RE Auto line, and uh, 
For this particular line, uh, just like all 135 millimeters, uh, the design's a little simpler. Four, uh, four elements in three groups. Again, single, single layer coating. It has six aperture blades and its closest focal distance, focus distance is the same as all 135s. It's 1.5 meters. And again, up here for, for feet and uh, inches in that, in that regard. And it's 390 uh, grams. And the difference between the models here, of course, this one, as I told you, has the uh, telescoping um, hood on that. So on, off, on, off, on, off. Stop playing with that, your mother always says, right? You go blind. So I didn't have to back up a little to get one and a half meters from the, uh, from the camera. And as I said, I'm going to focus in on the, on the end, make sure I'm at 3.5. Here we go, focusing in on the very end of the 15 to 45. Oh yeah, nice and sharp there. One, two, three. Voila. And that is, that is the, uh, the 135. So um, just as the other two lenses, let me show you uh, a little little sample of uh, of Mr. Dillon, which uh, actually I took this afternoon because uh, I didn't actually get this I didn't actually get this lens in my possession until just uh, just yesterday. So these ones I took yesterday morning, this one uh, yesterday afternoon because uh, it finally finally showed up out of uh, out of customs. You know I'm here in Vietnam and customs likes to hold things for a while and. toy with them and do who knows what with them before I finally get them. But anyway, here's some pictures of Dylan. All right, so that was, that was that. Hopefully it uh, gave you some, uh, gave you some good insight into what the possibilities are for these for these lenses and uh you know i can't i can't emphasize enough how uh how much i like them you know these are these are super super lenses Superman. Uh, i i really 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 want the uh, 58 1.4 uh, as i said maybe next month i'll grab one of those and it, it, it's really such an excellent lens. I'll give it. I'll give it its own video. But uh, but that's all I have for you for this week. As I said, this is Topcon Company, which in today's world is uh, not making optics anymore for cameras, uh, but they are still in business. I mean, they're making medical equipment and whatnot. Uh, you know, other other imaging uh, equipment for uh, for the medical community. So they're still in business, but. They just decided that the camera wasn't there. It wasn't their thing, which is a shame because they, I said, they put out great products. I can highly recommend them. You know, don't buy them just because I say so, but you know, if you get a chance to check them out, uh, do so, you'll be uh, pleasantly surprised. Uh, especially if you're into vintage lenses and you're into economical stuff here. So as I said, these three will post the uh, price what I paid for them up here, and you'll see that they're not uh, not at all expensive compared to some of today's uh, lenses that are out there. So um, to wrap this all up, I you know um, if you're in the market for any uh, editing software, Luminar is uh, the software I use, and you know I get a little something something if you uh, if you purchase the link down below. Uh, you also save $10, uh, which is not bad because it's already economical. It's like 50 or $67 or $70, something like that. So take uh, $10 off that and it's even cheaper. And it's a, it's a great competitor as well as companion to uh, Lightroom and Photoshop and so on and so forth. So down below. Preferred. Preferred being below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Click the link, get yourself some great software. So that's it from me. Um, what I would like you to do is subscribe, please help my channel subscribe, please and subscribe. 
Um, give me a thumbs up. Hopefully you like it. Uh, give me a thumbs up anyway. Why not help a poor guy down on his luck? You know, looking to uh, build uh, build up his channel. Um, so, uh, and re remember, as, as I always say, you belong here. You belong here at Camera Talk with Dr. Scott. So again, this was Modesty Photography. I would like you to have yourself a great week, a great weekend, and I will see you in the next video. All right. Uh, remember, voting voting's coming soon, right? Isn't it? I don't know, it depends when I release this. It might already be over by the time I release it. But if you're not, get out there and vote. Vote for somebody, anybody. All right. Take care. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Here I am.